Resource Watch is brought to you in association with Tebe Investment Corporation. Platinum mining in South Africa is supported by the country possessing over 80% of the world's platinum group metal reserves. No metal has been more controversial this year. And we're speaking to a company that made sure that their people were heard. Welcome to Resource Watch. I'm Nozi Pumban. First up, let's take a look at news making headlines in the resource sector. Petra Diamonds has sold its rare blue diamond for $27.6 million. The company discovered the 122 and a half carat gem from the Cullinan mine outside Pretoria. Petra announced the diamond was purchased by a partnership comprising itself and a polishing firm which wished to remain anonymous. Anglo Gold Ashanti's plans to restructure into two separate companies has been stopped following shareholder resistance to a $2.1 billion rights issue. Earlier this month, shares in the company fell more than 12% when it unveiled plans to float a UK-listed gold company consisting of its international assets and develop a diversified mining company from the remainder of its South African mines. And days after concluding a $3 billion platinum investment with Russia, Zimbabwe says it's working on lowering royalties on the metal. Producers had complained about excessive revenue contributions to the government while commodity prices remain soft. Gold royalties have already been cut from 7 to 5 percent. Listed Royal Bafokeng Platinum is a black owned and controlled mid tier platinum groups metal producer. Though young, the company has managed to take on the metals' trials and tribulations, especially this year, in their stride. Mpuleng Bue, the executive for corporate affairs at Royal Bafokeng Platinum, joins us now. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. A very interesting strategy that Royal Bafokeng has employed, one that has become world renowned. Perhaps just talk to us about why you've decided to engage your stakeholders in the way that you do. Thank you very much, uh, Nozipo, for having me. Um, as, a, as a platinum producer and a company in the resources space, we rely on a number of things for our business uh, strategy to come together. I think key of this, we rely on relationships with our employees. Mm. And with that, I have to add through the, uh, the organization that they would choose to represent them, mm. be it a, a trade union of mm. sorts. So we place a premium in how we develop those, those relationships. The second area which is important for us to focus on and ensure that the relationship are sounds is obviously with the host communities, that is the communities at our doorstep and close to whose uh, those to, to whom we, we are mining. Mm. Both those we, we work very closely with mm. through different endeavors to keep the relationships uh, sound. You've mentioned uh, the trade unions and you've got uh, the National Union of uh, Mine Workers being the dominant uh, union. Would that change if you saw smaller unions coming to the fore? Because to a large extent, others have argued that you've managed your labor relations simply because you only have one union. But uh, should there be some degree of fragmentation, you'd be in trouble. The structure of our industrial relations uh, as provided for in the law makes provision for majority unions to operate. So the question of fragmentation, I don't think arises really. Uh, it will always be a majority um, a dominant union that, that, that represents uh, the workforce at any particular mine or any particular company. So that question really doesn't. Mm. If a new player comes on board and has a majority tomorrow or next year or whenever, mm. that's another situation altogether which we would look at. But let me just hasten to say that we obviously will deal with any union that our employees choose as they are represented. Mm. Earlier this year, you managed to successfully to avoid having a strike and you signed a three-year uh, wage agreement with uh, the National Union of, of Mine Workers. It cost you 9.1, though, in terms of your cost to labor on your balance sheet. Is this sustainable? 
Nazipa, this is the second time, in fact, that we signed long-term um, wage agreement. The first was the one that expired in June, at end of June. It was a three-year term agreement. Mm -hmm. We now recently signed a new one, which is a five-year term one. And yes, these things does come at a cost, but what cost does one pay for stability, for labor stability, and being able to operate in an environment where you can pro continue to produce? Let me also add and say that we go for these long-term agreements because we look at just more than the numbers. We look at a whole sustainable model of how we improve the conditions of, of, our, of our employees. Mm. We would have not been able to do a housing development project if we had signed a one-year agreement because you need time for that to And especially on that housing development project, uh, you've begun to hand over some of these houses. Many have said that you are rethinking uh, the living out allowance. Is this true? What happens now to the living out allowance that employees uh, were receiving prior to this development? Nazipo, the housing allowance and the homeowners uh, um, allowance will fall away in time and they will, be they, they will be applied towards repaying of the, of the houses that get, get allocated to, to, to the employees. How are you managing uh, the handover process? There have been some naysayers that have said that this will eventually lead to some sort of violent outplay as uh, workers begin fighting over houses. I'm sure this is something that you have taken into consideration. So how are you managing it? We handed over the first phase, which comprises 422 units, of which over 80% has been allocated and ready for and will be occupied, uh, and the rest are in the process of being, of, mm. um, of being, of being allocated. W it is intended, there is a phase two of this development, which will see a further 3,000 or so houses developed. The end game here is going to be that each and every one of our, uh, of our enrolled employees will ultimately have a house within which to live. Mm. What about new uh, employees? Uh, is this now going to be worked in uh, into their broader uh, package that they receive from the company? Um, yes, as I say, we will, we, all our employees, each one of them, of the mm. enrolled employees will end up having a house. So when new people come on board, we will have to find a way that they can be accommodated. Obviously, in so far as this development is concerned, it was a 422 with an additional 3,000 or so. That, I believe, is the capacity of the current ground that we have, but we would have to mm. look at other solutions. We will also look at solutions for contract employees because they are not currently necessarily catered for here. But they, also as employees, mm need decent housing and that's it an issue we will look at. It certainly sounds like it's another first uh, by Royal Buffalo King and really leading the way in terms of rethinking uh, the, the living out allowance. But let's quickly just have a quick reflection on your latest results. Very pleasing results indeed. And of course, it makes us then ask the question, what's next? What's in your operational pipeline? What can we expect from you? <laughs> um, um, I will be careful not to, to gaze into the crystal ball, obviously. <laughs> um, but I think maybe the most operationally the most yes the, the results are pleasing. Thank you very much. We particularly pleased because they came on the background of a very protected strike, five months long. We were fortunate in that we enjoyed um, operational stability and st uh, stability of labor. So they are pleasing results in the in that context. The biggest single thing that maybe is happening operationally is I think our development at Stale Drift, mm. which really will be the next phase of our business, um, it's uh, stale drift, is, is ground close to our existing mine, Bafuken Rasimoni Platinum Mine, BRPM, and we are the process, in the process of developing that and it will be the future of, 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 uh, of our plant. Puling, thank you so much for joining us. We'll certainly be keeping our ears and eyes on the ground to see how you further produce uh, results in the future. That's a big thank you to Puling Puwe. He is the executive for corporate affairs at Royal Bafokeng Platinum. <laughs> Mining in South Africa is traditionally based on the migrant labor system. It resulted in miners living far from their families in hostels and informal housing. In today's Gem of the Week, we look at how RBP is taking steps to counter the legacy of the migrant labor system as Mpuleng Bue has just shared with us. 
want to put a plasma here. And then here I'm going to buy some wonderful and beautiful sofa. I'm going to put it here with a, a nice carpet. First time homeowner Godfrey Mosakale is excited about furnishing his new home. Mosakale is one of the first batch of 422 Royal Buffalo King Platinum Miners who will be getting houses as part of the company's employee home ownership scheme. It's a great pleasure for me and my family to have this house. My plans for this house is to see that uh, in future my, 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 my children are going to uh, get a better life and then get a better future. Every permanent employee will eventually be allocated a house through a loan at an interest rate which will be lower than traditional banks. The loan repayment includes the employee's living out allowance plus an additional portion of no more than 12% of their salaries. This arrangement will see the lowest paid workers paying monthly instalments of just under 3,000 Rand for a 500,000 Rand bond. A unit like this one is what a miner in the lowest level employee category would occupy. As you can see, it's got an open plan lounge and kitchen, a bathroom with a built-in tub and toilet, and three bedrooms. The project stems from the 2011 wage negotiations, where stakeholders agreed to incorporate housing as part of the wage strategy. A housing investigation committee comprising of management and the union was established. We want us to look at the broader strategy, because wages anyway are strategy, because it's a part of the implementation of the strategy and the business plan of the company. We want us to incorporate housing in the wage strategy and we included the housing and that resulted in establishing a housing investigative uh, committee comprising management as well as the unions. We looked at various models, we looked at very, uh, various areas, we, we spoke to various consultants until we came to this, this place here which was picked by the union by the way and that scared the hell out of me because I was, because this prime land at what cost is it going to be? Are our employees going to afford it? They said, as if it gives us decent life, we'll deny ourselves other niceties. The National Union of Mine Workers, the majority union at Royal Buffalo King, says this is the first step to restoring dignity to workers in South Africa's mining industry. Phase two will be complete in 2019. Christine Mundwa, CNBC Africa, Rustenburg. That's it for this week's show. Do stay in touch following me at Nozi Pombanja or at CNBC Africa. And don't forget that our hashtag is Resource Watch. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.